Good morning. Good morning. My name is Philip Craig, and I am the head chaplain here at OES, now in my 10th year. It's my privilege and honor to stand here as preacher this morning. Thank you, Mother Heather, for the invitation. Although I will say, following the joy of hearing my colleague Vijay read the gospel, you may believe you've already heard the sermon once today. <laughs> but I'm already standing here, Vijay, so I'll, I'll go as well. I'm preaching in a space today I'm quite accustomed to. Only today it's to a congregation that is perhaps a bit older, perhaps a bit calmer, perhaps a bit furrier than Mother Heather and I are accustomed to in a standard OES lower school chapel. As you might imagine, I'm often asked to explain what's so special about Episcopal schools. And if the person asking doesn't have at least a good hour, I'll quickly offer these talking points. Episcopal schools celebrate inquiry and the inherent joy and learning that comes from questions. Episcopal schools honor the sacred value of gathering and reflection. Episcopal schools highlight the importance of social justice, care for our neighbor. Inquiry, sacred gathering, care for neighbor. Sounds a lot like a Sunday morning at the parish of St. John the Baptist, which is why this morning is such a tangible reflection of the mutual benefits we have in our shared mission here at the end of Nickel Road. Another thing I love about chaplaincy at an Episcopal school is the sense of seasons, especially at the start of our school year. But there definitely comes that moment every fall when I realize for sure that summer is over. <laughs> Perhaps you know or remember those feelings well yourself. I recognize it at some point in the face of our students. I recognize it in the face of our faculty. That phrase, summertime and the living is easy, makes sense for sure. Lately in our gospel readings, though, it seems like summertime is definitely over for the disciples of one Jesus Christ. They've been following along with him for some time now. Over these past few weeks, our gospel readings have shown a Jesus asking some fairly extraordinary things of his followers to give away all their possessions, to forgive those who wronged them countless times, to take up his cross and more. No wonder then, by about now, they're feeling overwhelmed. Living in Christ doesn't seem easy living at all. I imagine that these earnest and sincere and hardworking disciples feel totally inadequate to the tasks that Christ asks of them, insufficient to the challenges, unable to imagine accomplishing anything that he asks of them. I wonder if any of you ever feel that way, inadequate, insufficient, unable. I know I do. After another week like the one that we've had with so much going on in our world and in our nation and in our community, perhaps even in our families, I suspect lots of us feel the same way, like we might not be up to the task, like we might be a bit short on our faith of all things just to get us through the day, let alone to make a difference in the world. Maybe then Jesus' words this morning are just what the disciples needed, just what we need to reorient to the miraculous presence of God all around us and the totally sufficient faith that they and we already have. Come unto me, Christ says, all you who travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. Here's the thing, and I'll apologize for saying bluntly what we already know. Jesus doesn't expect things to be easy or simple for us. He regularly reminds us of our role as servants. Servants usually don't get great thanks for doing their job. They just do it. That's more what faith is like, I believe, simply the willingness to do what needs to be done. And I have to remember that when I'm super interested in having someone else notice that I did a good thing. Faith is not, in other words, some kind of scarce resource that, that needs to be saved or, or spent or added to and all the rest. And it certainly isn't always heroic. Indeed, it usually isn't heroic, but instead is simply and humbly doing what needs to be done big and small, great or mundane, just because it needs doing. A man named Francis knew this well. His example matters to us today. Again, that faith that simply says the willingness to do what needs to be done. I think if we're paying attention, we might see Jesus hinting at this idea all along the way. 
that faith is found not in the mighty acts of heaven, but in the ordinary and everyday acts of doing what needs to be done, responding to the needs of those around us, caring for the people who come our way. So here's then a good question for us this morning. Do you know and believe this about your faith? That Jesus would call so many of the unnoticed things that all of us do every day faithful? Showing up for work and doing a good job? Listening when someone needs to talk? Getting the kids off to school? Sitting with someone in the dining room who looks like they might use a friend? Volunteering at a shelter? Voting even if the field of candidates seems discouraging? Balancing the books for your business? or your community group, writing a thank you note to someone who's done a kindness, cooking supper, praying for a neighbor who's having a hard time, the list could go on and on. And that's the point. None of these are any big deal, and yet they are just the kind of acts that occupy so much of our lives. And I suspect it wouldn't cross the minds of any of you that many of these things you do are acts of faith. Somehow an act of faith seems like it needs to be significant or costly or even extravagant to merit God's attention, and that misperception is not new. I realize that sometimes we may wonder what difference such small things make in light of the major challenges and problems of the world. So then here is our question to leave with today. What might the world look like next week if each of us offered even one more simple act of faith. I wonder if you might, in this moment, think of one more kind act you might offer at some point this week. If you can think of something and you're willing to do it, would you raise your hand? Wow. We bless things all the time in this OES chapel this church. Today we're blessing pets, but today we also remember an art and remember an, a person who understood the importance of simple acts of kindness. I hear him, Francis, calling out to us today, saying, your acts of kindness are a blessing. This morning may we lift to Christ these everyday, ordinary acts of faith as honorable, as God-blessed, as important, and then by lifting them up, multiply them. Because when we see that our everyday acts of faith have significance, I believe that we're renewed to do even more. Look, when we read the headlines and see news of more shootings, more injustice, more war, it can seem like there's no hope. Yet all around us, signs of hope, of God continuing to love and care for this world, abound, even and especially through the simple, ordinary acts of faithfulness that you, dear people of God, are already doing. If you need a good reminder of the hope that I mentioned, come to an OES lower school chapel service. Witness 300 plus children singing about a circle of love that surrounds us, or of the heavens telling the glory of God. Blessings indeed. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, when the challenges of your faith-filled life do make you weary, and they will, do remember our gospel our good news. We are never alone. Our burdens are never more than can be carried by Christ from the cross to our hearts. For I am gentle and humble in heart, says Christ, and there you will find rest for your souls. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.